So over the last few hours, a whole bunch of new information around the release of Assetto Corsa Competizione 8 for PS4 and Xbox has been announced. Now, one of the details that has got a lot of people concerned, and rightly so, is the fact that this is going to be running at 30 frames per second, 1080p for the PS4 and 900p for the Xbox. Now, this has understandably caused a lot of people to be instantly dismissive of the release, thinking that it's going to be pretty much unplayable at 30 frames per second, because that's the sort of experience that you have on a PC. And then on the flip side to that, you've got people who are console fanboys saying, you know, 30 frames per second is pretty standard, either 30 or 60 for a uh, for a console, and there's no reason to be concerned. So there's, there's truth to both sides of the argument here, and what I wanted to do today is explain to you exactly the reasons why the gameplay experience at 30 frames per second can be a lot smoother on a console than what it is on a PC. So... Just to give you a little bit of background information, I am not a console player at present. As you can see, I have a high-end gaming PC, and that's what I use for all of my gaming. So I don't even actually own a current generation console. But that said, I did work for seven years as a product specialist at Sony at their head office and uh, have a lot of experience testing software, testing different pieces of hardware, so different TVs, different consoles, all those sorts of things. So I feel like I'm in a bit of a unique position here to be able to sort of explain this to you guys and hopefully uh, make you understand exactly how this works so you can make your own decision. Now with that said, it is also important to understand that I haven't had exposure to a set of Corsa Competition CNA specifically on console, so I can't speak to the gaming experience specifically there. But what I can offer you is a bit of an explanation from a technical perspective as to why I'm not being instantly dismissive of this and why I want to wait to see what it actually looks like rather than just assuming that it's going to be garbage at 30 frames per second. So we'll start off by talking about some of the more obvious factors here. First and foremost, the majority of console players are playing on a controller. Now, controllers have a much less sensitive input than a steering wheel or pedals or a mouse and keyboard. So straight away, it's kind of like a dampening effect that you get on the controller. So the inputs tend to be a little bit smoother and that translates to a smoother experience on the screen. But we're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about that simply because in the context of a simulation, the majority of people that are going to be serious about doing this are going to be doing it on some sort of wheel and pedal arrangement. So removing input devices from the equation, we still do have some really important factors here. So. First of all, most people are playing consoles on a TV and TVs employ all sorts of fancy post-processing to the input signal to create a smoother overall experience. Now, one of the really important things to understand here is that our eyes actually aren't anywhere near as good as we think they are. Our brain is actually really fantastic at creating extra data or sort of interpolating data b between what we're actually seeing and what we interpret to sort of create missing bits of information and sort of fill in the gaps, so to speak. One of the big problems that our eyes have is called visual retention. And that is where we look at an image and then we, we move our perspective or we change the image. And there's actually a little bit of what I call hysteresis between what we were looking at and what we're looking at now. So say, for example, you're looking at a static image for a long period of time and then that image changes. You can sort of see a bit of a ghost of the previous image. And we've all seen those optical illusions in the past where you stare at the book of a page and then you go and look at something else and you can see Jesus in the image or something like that. So you'll all be you'll all be familiar with that sort of principle. Now, a lot of TV manufacturers actually sort of play tricks around this to uh, to create a smoother experience with the visual quality. So what they're doing is they're taking the input signal from the console or the PC or whatever the input device is to the TV and they're employing techniques like frame interpolation between frames or things like backlight blinking, for example, to create a smoother overall experience or sort of reset that visual hysteresis or that visual retention. So in the, in the case of uh, frame interpolation, what they're doing is they're taking one input frame and then the next frame. And if those frames are, say, one millisecond apart, what it'll do is it'll create another frame in between those to create an overall smoother experience. Now, the downside of that is that can introduce input lag because obviously the frame is being drawn by the TV and not by the input device itself. So it's always better to have a higher frame rate coming out of the device itself or as an input signal rather than have it interpolated later on. It's going to give you better visual quality, less sort of artifacting and a smoother overall experience. But the point here is that TVs play a lot of post-processing tricks on you to give you an overall smoother experience, which doesn't happen with monitors. And that can account for at least some of the difference between what you see when you're playing on a console on a TV and what you're seeing when you're playing on a PC on a conventional monitor. But that doesn't account for everything here. Now, as I'm sure a lot of you would be aware, many of those post-processing techniques can come at the cost of a massive increase in the amount of input lag that you experience. So most modern TVs these days allow you to switch into a gaming mode of some description 
which does away with a lot of those features to give you a smoother overall input experience. So it really does become a bit of a balancing act between the overall visual quality and smoothness of the picture and input lag and things like that. And some manufacturers hit this better than others. I'm not going to get into all of that and which TVs are best in this video. We've done previous videos which uh, explain that in a lot more detail. But those of you who have played a console on a PC monitor or a PC on a TV would would still notice that there is a difference, uh, quite a quite a large difference between the smoothness of 30 frames per second on a PC as opposed to on a console. So why exactly is that when you remove all other devices from the equation? And it comes down to a pretty simple explanation. There's some fundamental differences between the way a console and a PC operate. Consoles are designed with specific hardware in mind. The games are, you know, developed knowing that there's a specific type of hardware or a specific set of hardware and therefore the games can be optimized to run more smoothly on a console. So the really important thing to understand here is that most people that are playing at 30 frames per second on a PC aren't doing so by choice. It's going to be some sort of a hardware bottleneck or some sort of a limitation that is capping them at 30 frames per second and because of that reason what you'll find is that the frame rate isn't actually stable at a constant 30 frames per second all the time. The frame time is going to be varying quite greatly between different frames. And that is what creates that jittering, that lag spiking, that screen tearing and all those things that we don't want when we're gaming. So compare that to a console and what they're able to do is they're able to optimize the software and the hardware to work together to deliver a much more consistent 30 frames per second. And that is the main reason when combined with the other factors that we talked about earlier, why 30 frames per second on a console feels a lot smoother than it does on a PC. Now we can, to an extent, sort of emulate this on a PC as well. If we lock our frame rate at 30 frames per second and enable motion blurring on a higher end PC that's actually able to deliver a constant 30 frames per second without any spiking, you'll actually find that the experience is still quite smooth. It's still not as good as 60 or 100 or 120 or 144 frames per second. But the most important factor in delivering a smooth gameplay experience is making sure that you have a consistent frame time, consistent frame rate that isn't jumping and changing all over the place all the time. And so for that reason, I would also recommend if you're playing on a system that is struggling to sort of keep up with higher frame rates, you are actually better off at limiting the frame rate a little bit lower at a rate that's able to be delivered consistently without chopping and changing all over the place. So if you'd like to see more detail on that, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to do another video where I can explain that and show you a few more examples. But hopefully today's video has explained a little bit more about the reason why console gameplay can often feel smoother than PC gameplay at similar frame rates. And hopefully also, uh, I guess, re reduced a little bit of the concern, more specifically around the release of ACC for console. I'm personally definitely not writing it off just yet. Obviously, a higher frame rate would be better. But remember, we are talking about consoles that are uh, approaching almost seven years old now. And we're talking about a title as well, which is very, very taxing on hardware. So yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how it plays out in the real world. But yeah, don't be instantly dismissive of it. I do think that there's still potential there. And it's going to be really interesting to to see how this plays out. So thanks guys very much for watching. Hopefully this video has helped you out. Leave a thumbs up if it has. Make sure you're subbed, hit the notification bell too so you don't miss future videos. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.